Any questions? And it doesn't just have to be about the speech. It can, about be, can be about anything. OK, I saw your hand go up. And would you mind standing? Stand. And your name is? Mason. Mason. Um, Mason, what's your question? Um, what's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? <laughs> ah, that's a good question. Um, OK, I think growing up, I really liked dolphins, because they're really smart. And also, they smile, at, at least from a human perspective. It looks like they're smiling. We don't know, because we don't know what's going on in their heads. Um, but more recently, I, I mean, lions, there's something special about lions. I like the, the mane, right? Because I kind of see a connection between the love that I have for my hair and my beard. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm torn between dolphin and lion. Uh, great question, great question. OK, I'm just going to go around the room, right? And uh, so I'm going to go like that, if that's right with you guys. So you don't need to keep your hand up the whole time. I don't want you, you know, straining your arms. Yes, sir. Do you mind standing? Is it? Oh, yes. OK. All right. So you hold on to that and ask your question. Fire away. What's your favorite color? My favorite color. Whew. That's, a, that's a tough one because, um, OK. OK, I'll tell you what my favorite color is. And I'll also tell you what my favorite color combination is. I, like, I love black. As in black, black, right? <laughs> um, because it's, it's such an elegant color, and it goes with so much. So yeah, um, my, favorite, my favorite color combination has to be blue and burgundy. So what, the tie that I'm wearing, especially love that. I don't know, it's just, um, yeah, elegant. I like elegance in general. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Is it Kel or Carl? Kel. Kel, thank you. So do you want to pass it on with, um, to anyone who has more questions? Is it Inca? Yeah. Yes, Inca, go ahead. What's your top tip of getting your dream? That's a great question. Top tip when it comes to securing your dream, of course it will depend on the nature of your, of your dream, right? Not everyone wants to go to Cambridge and study law, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I'd say as long as you have a dream which isn't just about yourself, and you, you're always think, thinking about, okay, how do I pursue my own interests, my own um, my own agenda, but also include as many people as I can. Because you'll find that you can achieve way more than you can imagine. Like, I, I initially, my dream was to study law at Cambridge, but I've been able to do so much more than just that. Because I was always thinking about how do I give back? How do I help those who've helped me? How do I help those who, um, you know, who come from similar backgrounds? That would be my top tip. Thank you for your question, Inka. My name is Shaila, and what made you become a lawyer? Uh, a couple of reasons. So I love public speaking. I love, I love the theatrical element. So I did quite a lot of acting as part of my um, role as a youth leader in my youth group. Um, so we, yeah, I just love, I love being able to command an, an audience. It's, um, it's fun. More more specifically about law, you know, the issues. It's about the issues that we're trying to address, right? So I'm especially interested in human rights. Um, I'm interested in the future of the UK post-Brexit. It's a deep concern to me, and I look forward to having debates with politicians. Um, I have a, li a long list and specific questions I have that, I, that weren't answered um, uh, during that whole period. Um, so yeah, lawyers are, we're well, not politicians. At least the, 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 the best lawyers, in my opinion, aren't politicians. We, we, we um, oh my gosh, I, I just noticed the picture. <laughs> I'm going to try not to tear up. I promised my family that I wouldn't. Um, OK, so we're, we're, we're not politicians in that we were very, 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 very committed to truth. Like, even if, you're, even if you suspect that your client is guilty, for example, this is a question I get a lot. How do you defend guilty people? You can't really know unless you were there. Yeah. So, or they admit it to you. And so even if they admit it to you, I mean, it's very possible that, that admitting it just because they want to, they want to be done with it. They don't want to go through the trial process because it's a very, it's really grueling process being taken to court. Um, so your job as a lawyer, even in those circumstances, is to uphold certain principles. Now, of course, you're going to have bad apples. You're going to have lawyers who don't do that, but I would say they are, especially in the UK, they are a minority. Thank you. 
My name's Albert, and I was, and I wondered, what age were you when you wanted to become a lawyer? The the thing about my my journey is I've done so much. Um, so I'm I'm one of those rare people. We are quite rare, especially in the 21st century, who is happy to just do a lot of different things and make connections between different areas of knowledge. So I don't like professing this, but I, since you asked, I would consider myself a polymath. So um, traditionally, um, polymaths were people who, people like Leonardo da Vinci, who was uh, an engineer, an architect, an artist, a mathematician, a physicist, like he's like your archetypal um, polymath. But you have more recent examples like Maya Angelou, who was pivotal in the civil rights movement. Um, she was a linguist, she was, uh, she was a poet, she was into history, um, she was into film. So those are quite different areas of study, and yet she was able to combine it, um, sometimes in, in parallel, so doing two or three things at the same time, and sometimes in succession, so doing film first. And then, so um, I want to make sure I'm answering your, your original question. Your, your original question was, when did I become interested in law? I've always been interested in law as a concept, um, especially given my Christian roots. Uh, the Bible is a book of laws, like essentially. It's, um, it's just full of rules. But there's something very interesting that happens when you, as the perceiver, the person interpreting um, law, legislation, uh, that process of interpretation for me is really fascinating because if it was so simple, then why on earth would we all interpret it so differently? So I'm interested in seeing how, how I, as an individual, can be like a bridge builder. How can I bridge different interpretations so that it, it makes sense? It might not be perfect, but it makes sense. And that, I, I mean, it's quite difficult to pin it down. I guess growing up, I really I was inspired by Barack Obama. He was like my number one inspiration. And he did politics first, and then Harvard Law. So I, I, I thought I'd do something similar. And I, I guess I came to that conclusion G, uh, G, uh, during my GCSEs, so what, 14, 15, 16, yeah. Ty is it Tyrell or Tyrell? Tyrell. If you didn't become a lawyer, what would you be? So, so I, um, I love teaching. I love, yeah, I mean, I love giving back and sharing knowledge, but not just sharing it in, like, I know better, but having conversations. And, um, and yeah, conversations like this. I love engaging in dialogue because you guys have so much to teach me. So um, yeah, I probably would have been a teacher. Um, Arian, yeah. Um, what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Okay, my mom's here, so I have to be very, <laughs> very selective. Okay, it's definitely, um, uh, so, 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 I'm more in touch with my Congolese culture than, than my Rwandan culture. So I'm just going to have to preface by saying that. Um, in Congo, we have, we have um, something called Tabana Kwanga, which is, basically <laughs> which is basically goat meat. And is it yam? The Kwanga. Yam, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a lovely combination. Is it barbecued? Like the way they, they make it? Yeah. So, but it's like a really special way they make it. Yeah, and, uh, there's also jo uh, jollof rice, which isn't Congolese as such, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Congo is the heart of Africa, is it? E everything that was produced elsewhere came from Congo. Yeah. I'm claiming that. Okay, but yeah, thank you. I mean, I hope, yeah, 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 that was a great question. So... So, um, how did you feel when you reached your first thousand to, you know, in money to get to Kenya? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So I felt really, really um, grateful, you know, the fact that people read my story, watched my video, and were like, okay, I don't even know whether my donation is going to make any difference. Because that's the thing about a crowdfunding campaign, right? No one's going to, unless you have, unless you can afford it, um, no one's going to just empty out their bank account <laughs> and invest in this one person. Um, so it's, it's, it's that risk assessment that I always find interesting because I've supported a number of people 
myself. And I, I also have that, need to have that internal conversation. OK, so I'm going to invest in this person. Um, how do I know if they're going to make it? But you, I, I still invest anyway, because it's that leap of faith. It's that you envision that person and the impact that they could have. And so you take a chance. So the fact that people were doing that, going through that whole mental gymnastics, for me, was, um, was really powerful. Um, so yeah, grateful, also quite relieved, because it meant, because passing the 1,000 mark, once you get past that, and you, know, you can build momentum, and you just keep repeating what's worked. What's worked. Yeah. These are great questions so far, guys. Honestly, I'm loving them. Did you get 66K or more? <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so it's quite hard to say because I, so what, what happened was, and I'll be completely upfront with you. So I, I managed to get quite a few scholarships after the fact, which is always quite annoying, isn't it? Because y y I had a specific deadline by which I had to show, OK, I've got the money. Can I now proceed and study here? Um, but the, the applications for scholarships, they, they can take very long, which is why I'm, another reason why I'm here today, to talk about a charity that I've set up, which addresses this. Um, but it can take so, so long to get those scholarship confirmations. So I, w I was having to raise that money and also wait to hear back. So crowdfunding alone, um, I haven't actually done the, the, the specific calculations, but it was probably something like, probably something like, uh, let me think. Yeah, I think w whatever's on my GoFundMe right now, um, and I don't check it all the time, and it's still live, and that's primarily because whatever, and I tell people this, whatever additional money people just happen to be like, okay, um, I read his story, I know he's there, but I still just want to support. Whatever additional money that I get, I just invest it in the charities that I'm a part of. So Amos Bursary, Elevation Foundation. And I tell them that. I ask them for their permission. Um, so yeah, whatever's on there is what I crowdfund. And then the scholarships are not reflected on, on there. So I think, as far as I know, it's like 80,000. 80, 80, yeah, 80,000 pounds. So $106,000. But yeah, I can see you're, you're, you're into generating wealth. That's, <laughs> Good, good, good. We need, we need more people like you. Um, my name is Heidi, and my question Hello. is, um, what was it like on your first day of Cambridge? Oh, that's a good question. First day. Um, I remember my first day. I mean, I'd visited Cambridge prior, but my first like, official day, my, you know, I was like, bringing my stuff into my room. Um, it was a huge sense of relief. So I remember just feeling like, yes, I'm here. Like, OK, no more crowdfunding. As much as I loved it, uh, well, I should get, get on with it, get on with my degree. So yeah, um, I've, I remember feeling relieved. I remember thinking to myself, I need to make as many wonderful friends as I possibly can, because I'm only here for, t for two years. Um, yeah. And my partner wants to know, um, what's your favorite sport? My favorite sport is basketball. So I was actually captain of my <laughs> I was actually captain of my basketball team until sixth form, um, and at some point I was strongly considering actually going to the U.S. Um, and and playing basketball and also doing a degree, but I just yeah I just decided no I, I want to focus on on my academics like I really want to yeah I just want to focus on my academics I want to go to a, a really good university here in the U.K. Hi, my name's Ella, and my question is, what made you never give up when to fulfill your dream to go to Cambridge? What made me never give up? Um, a lot of things, Ella. Um, so good family, supportive family. Um, my faith, my Christian faith. There's a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about, you know, trusting and obeying and, and not being anxious and, um, you, know, uh, you know, sow now and your harvest the fruits of your labor. So, you know, patience, teaching patience, essentially. Um, so, yeah, faith, family, friends, um, but also just having a really good strategy. So it's not like this was my first time having to market myself and 
you know, because if you go to an interview, you're essentially having to market yourself. You're having to sell yourself to someone uh, for them to decide whether they want to give you a job um, or an internship. So social media is a similar space. Of course, there are a whole host of other challenges like anonymous people sending you weird messages, um, but you just learn to ignore them and focus on what's most important, and that is I need to get to Cambridge and study law. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Alice, Hi. and who is your biggest inspiration? You're looking at her. <laughs> yeah, my mum is my biggest inspiration. My, my dad, too. I mean, they're both, they're both one in the same, right? Uh, my parents. Um, their story is intertwined, and my dad is actually connected on Zoom. I don't know if he's, if he can hear us. Hold on, let me see. Dad, can you hear us? You're going to have to unmute yourself. Okay, he is connected. It's very likely he's, I don't think he's used to using Zoom. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, but yeah, my, my parents are just, are just very inspirational. And um, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with their story. It came in 1994, Congo, both Congo and Rwanda. There's lots of chaos. Um, they came here because they wanted a better future for all of us. I wasn't born yet. I was born three years later. Uh, but my siblings had been born by that point. So, um, yeah, just hearing that story. And then my dad in particular, when it came to Cambridge and his offer to study electronic engineering uh, as a postgrad, um, and hearing, you know, because it takes a lot of work, especially in those days. I mean, now things are better. There's better representation. It's not easier as such, but it's better representation. Um, but back in those days, I mean, there was nothing like what we have today. No social media, for example, for you to set up a crowdfunding campaign. Um, but yeah, yeah, really inspiring. My parents, they still inspire me today. Oh, there, okay, there they are. Dad, you just want to say, say hi to the kids? Hello? Yeah, Louise, we can hear you. You're going to have to unmute yourself. You, you muted yourself again. Yeah, we can hear you. Dad, say hi to them. They can see you. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Uncle. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello. How are you feeling, Dad? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, there's a lag. There's a time lag. Hello, Uncle. Okay, all right. What, what, what we're going to... We're gonna, um, Continue because I promised I was I going to keep this short. I, was, okay. I could not attend there. I was a bit busy. I'm waiting to go to Brussels. That's why. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, 